To begin this experiment, we will need to detach the silver bob from the centripetal force apparatus by unhooking the spring and removing it from the hanging string. Then to determine the mass of the bob, we will utilize the electronic balance. With the mass recorded, we will rehang the silver bob, but we will not attach the spring just yet. First. To set the radius of rotation, we will need to adjust the height of the bob by unwinding the string on the crossbar. However, we want to be careful not to unwind too much string, because we do not want the tip of the bob to come in contact with the radial measuring scale. To set the radius of rotation, we need to loosen the set screw on the crossbeam, and then we can move the crossbeam to align the tip of the bob with one of the radial markers. For this example, we will start by aligning the tip of the bob with the 20 centimeter mark. Once we are satisfied that the tip of the bob hangs freely above the pertinent marker on the radial scale, we can reattach the spring to the side of the bob. At rest, the spring should hold the bob at an angle with respect to the vertical, or in other words, the tip of the bob should no longer be aligned with the previously chosen mark on the radial measuring scale. If the spring does not deflect the bob from the vertical, then detach the spring from the bob and adjust the spr threaded spring holder until the spring is able to pull the bob away from the previously chosen mark and towards the center of the centripetal force apparatus. But do not go overboard. With just one hand, you should be able to easily pull the bob back to its vertical position over the radial marker. And if you cannot complete this deflection, then the spring should holder should be adjusted. Once the spring and the bob are situated in the centripetal force apparatus, ready your stopwatch and then begin to spin the apparatus from the top of the central column. As you spin the apparatus faster, you may notice that the bob starts to move along the radial direction, perpendicular to the direction of the rotational motion. Furthermore, the harder you spin the apparatus, the farther outward or away from the central column the bob will move. With this relationship in mind, you will need to adjust the speed you are spinning the centripetal force apparatus such that the tip on the bottom of the bob consistently passes over the radial marker you previously aligned the bob with when the spring was not attached. Determining if the bob is passing over the correct radial marker can be a little tricky. Generally, positioning your head parallel with the measurement scale and sighting directly in line with the marker of interest can make this process a little easier, but just be careful not to get too close to the moving bob. Once you have developed a rhythm for turning the centripetal force apparatus that consistently results in the bob passing over the correct mark on the radial measuring scale, you are ready to start timing the revolutions. Keep in mind that a complete revolution represents some point on your centripetal force apparatus passing you, going all the way around the circle, and then returning to you. This means that you could count revolutions from the bob, or from the counterweight, or really from any landmark on the apparatus, just as long as you are consistent. Also remember that when you start the timer, you cannot initially count one revolution. Rather, you need to wait for your landmark to come back around before you can count to one. For example, if I am using the bob as my reference, once the bob passes me for the first time, I start my timer. But the bob has to complete a full rotation before I count one in my head. You will need to complete 30 revolutions before you stop your timer. Then by dividing this time by 30, you will have a more accurate measurement for the average duration of each revolution. This process will then need to be completed three times for the same weight of bob in radial position. And for these three initial measurements, you should see relatively similar results. Next, without changing the position of the bob or the spring, carefully loosen the threaded washer on the top of the bob and mount a slotted mass on the top of the bob. Your instructor should specify the correct value, but make sure to adequately tighten the threaded washer so that the slotted mass cannot come loose inadvertently. You will then repeat the previous process by rotating the centripetal force apparatus to align the tip of the bob with the same previously determined radial marker. Also, just as before, you will need to measure the time for the apparatus to complete 30 revolutions, and we will do so three times to determine a more accurate averaged value. 
before reconfiguring the apparatus for a different radial position, you will need to use the GLX force sensor to experimentally determine the force required to pull the bob back to the vertical position over the correct radial marker. As usual, make sure to zero the force sensor, and either the graph or digits option may be selected on the GLX. Use a paper clip to attach the hook of the force sensor to the hanging bob, and it is important that the force sensor remain horizontal during this measurement. Once you have completed recording the force required to stretch the spring, the second half of this experiment may be completed simply by changing the radial placement of the bob and completing all previously outlined steps.